Ladies and gentlemen, now, and now TEDx. So really, really pleased to, to be here. Um, so many issues, so many agendas, um, so many challenges. Very difficult to know where to start. So I want to give you some simplicity in this talk. I want to give you some options, and I want to give you the basis for some action. So my challenge to you to start off with is there are lots and lots of issues and lots of areas. So climate change, I would say, is not necessarily the biggest issue. I would say urbanization is not necessarily the biggest issue. I'd say it's not necessarily about energy generation. It's not about energy bills. It's not about energy acts. It's not necessarily even about 9 billion population that we're due to have by 2050. All of those issues, ladies and gentlemen, I'd say are really, really important. They're massively important to us as a stable society. But fundamentally, I would suggest to you that all of those are a function of the fact that we have one planet, and the fundamental challenge for us today is that we're using up the resources that the planet provides to us faster than the world is providing them. So, the world is making stuff every year. The world is providing stuff. It's growing new forests for us. It's laying down minerals. It's providing water for us. And we're using them. And if you go back to the 1970s, you can see from the graph here that we were using about half of the world's resources um, that, that it was providing every year, which is great. That's sustainable. Lovely. Today, worldwide, we're using about one and a half times that contribution. And if you look at the, um, if you look at the, the graph, you will see that um, if you go to, to 2050, that means that we'll be using around about two times that. And if you bring that to the UK, because we're using more, uh, we're using more than, our, um, our, our, the, the, than, than on average, we're using around about three times that. You, me, um, across the nation, we're using about three times of our, 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 our fair share. So fundamentally, that's our challenge, that we can, on the face of it, we can be pulling out more resources to treat, to treat water. We can be going to Morocco, and we can be excavating it. We can be drilling more, um, more oil from the Arctic. I can go to North America and take sh shale gas. We can go down to South America, and we can do environmental assessments for, uh, for, for new mines down in, um, down in, down in South America. The resources, we can take them out of the ground. But ultimately, fundamentally, we have one of these. And so our challenge is how do we and when do we move to a sustainable society taking one planet's worth? Or at, one, or at what point do we, do we carry on ignoring it? And that's the challenge. And it's difficult, isn't it? Because we're all quite comfortable with what we're doing now. But fundamentally, whether that's you, whether that's our kids, whether that's our grandkids, whether it's somebody else. We have to grapple with that because when you look at it like this, somebody's got to take responsibility, somebody's got to take action. So, you're all business leaders, we're all senior people in our business. We're here to take action. There's three reactions that we could take. Which one would you be taking? So first of all, there's the action, I'll be long gone. Let's keep business as usual. Let's keep on tickety-boo, and I'll be long time retired by the time that that shows. I won't ask for a show of hands. I'm sure none of you in the room will be taking that. Secondly, let me just go to um, my, my, the second option, nothing to worry about. Technology will solve it. Great, not my responsibility. Down the track, we'll get, some, uh, we'll get something um, resolved. Or thirdly, that's relevant to me, and that's relevant to us and to our business. And I'm hoping because you're all there, option three is the one that you are particularly interested in. So let me make the assumption that you are all here. If, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're option one, then by all means, go and get an early coffee break, and I won't be remotely offended. So if it's option three, then let me say to you that there's three things that we need to be considering, and that's risk. That's opportunity, and that's process. So my first question, if you're thinking about it just from a risk perspective, the question to ask for your business 
is does your business model rely on an assumption of certain materials at a certain cost forever? Because if I take you back to here, if we've got one planet's worth of resources and we're using them up faster, just on a supply and demand perspective, ultimately, we will end up running short of these resources, the price will go up, and so therefore your assumption that materials will continue at the same price forever will no longer apply. So here's some examples. IKEA. They use round about 12 million cubic meters of, of timber every year. That's a lot of timber. So, question for, for IKEA, or if you're Kingfisher Group, they buy every year round about um, a, an area of wood the size of Switzerland. So if they are using that amount of timber and supply runs short, then the price will go up. And if your business model relies on selling large amounts of timber, then how will that react to you as customers? On the same premise, down the road you have Drax from here as they move to, to a biomass um, fueled system. Then you might expect then that the amount of um, the, the, the price of, of wood would go up as well. So again, challenging that assumption. If you were an out-of-town retailer as well, price of fuel, out-of-town retailers can directly track the footfall in their stores to the price of fuel. So if fuel goes up, the footfall goes down in their stores. If you're a water industry, if you're Yorkshire Water, well, the work that we've been doing with you, you know that we have a finite amount of water in our region. In 25 years' time, we'll have a million more customers. A million more customers wanting water, a million more customers wanting a good quality of life, a million more customers trusting that we will be, they will be able to get water when they turn the tap on. And let's face that in the context of also the Environment Agency potentially restricting the abstractions that that can be made um, from, from rivers and the like in order to support um, good quality ecological rivers. So that's a challenge, and how are we going to resolve that? Also, if you go to the supply chain as well. So we'll be hearing from Molson Coors later on about the importance of water, no doubt, for, for their business. This is a picture of the Nile. Will Business Council for Sustainable Development suggests that in the Nile, water shortages will significantly restrict the amount of cotton that will be grown in the Nile Valley in the future. So if you love your cotton sheets, then that will come under strain. And if you're, if you're um, a, a power generator, then you will also be needing large amounts of water today to, to cool your power stations. In Germany, we were working with one of the main country's um, power generators to... Um, to, to to, to understand if, um, if, their, um, if, if their future power stations would struggle to run because of water shortages. Now they know that, thankfully, and they can take steps to, to take action. So that's the risk element. Let me move on to the opportunity piece. The opportunity piece. Question two I made was, is it somebody else's opportunity or is it yours? key opportunity for you is if it's your business model, if it's your space today, do you leave that for somebody else to take hold of the opportunity or do you seize that? So here is, for example, um, the towel, the, the, the towel in your hotel room. How many of those, how many of you see the, um, the, um, the, 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 the sign in the hotel room? that says, do you really need to change your towels? Well, and so as a result, accept second best for your, um, I'm so sorry for the slides. Um, and, and, and so it's got a complete mind of its own, John. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, so let me just, uh, let me just talk this. So cradle to cradle on, um, on, on, on your, um, on, on towels. Um, by accepting second best, um, then, um, th then you have a, um, a soggy towel, but you're saving the planet. So we're working with, um, with, with a towel provider today and a detergents provider to, to look to see how can we change the sign in the hotel room. Change the sign in the hotel room so that you, 
you, you can change the towels, and when you change the towels, it does no environmental impact whatsoever. And actually, if we get to that nirvanic solution that we can, ch we can, we can change the, 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 the sign in the hotel room to say, change your towels whenever you like, because it improves the environment. It's a great opportunity, and that's the challenge. And think about that from brand value and brand proposition that that makes to, to, to the likes of Starwood Hotels or to Marriott. Dematerialization is a great opportunity as well. So those of you that had the record collection, the, the, the vinyl 12-inch record, that's come through from, 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 from the tape to the DVD to the iPod, and today you don't even need to have a, a, a record collection yourself. You can just subscribe to, 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 your, to, to your record collection online, five pounds a month. And that's fantastic, isn't it? And the same also for, for, for new business models. So the way that you can actually just lease things now rather than owning them. So for those of you who are, who are, who are, are technology um, geeks, how many of you know about websites? Zipcar, Girl Meets Dress, One Fine Stay, Dress Wanted, Park at My House, um, Stormates, all opportunities, all disruptive technologies that have meant that um, that, that you no longer need to own products, you no longer need to own materials, but you're getting a service which is as good. It means that we're dematerializing and you no longer need to actually own things, which is fantastic. So my third point is it's all about process. It's really, really easy for us in the day-to-day -day world in the day-to-day -day busyness of our work, to just accept the status quo, to just say it's, it's fine. We all know it's important, but in the busyness of what we do, day in, day out, the wrestle for us is that we forget that we have to make action, that we have to take a step, and we as business people have to drive the medium-term direction of what we're trying to do as a business. So our responsibility as leaders, to look after the numbers, but also critically important to chart the medium term direction of our businesses and to address these big opportunities. Because if you're not going to do it, then nobody's going to do it and your competitors will seize the opportunity. And so that's my challenge for you, ladies and gentlemen, that here we have one planet. Today, in the UK, we're using three. We can take that as an academic opportunity, or we can take that as an opportunity for our business. We can take that as a challenge for us. We can work together to say, how are we going to take this to be one planet rather than three planets? And we can work together from here. We can take action. We can grow our business. We can seize the opportunity. And that then means that together we can all make a difference. Thank you very much.